let's catch you up on what's been going on at Burnt River Ranch. The Salty did have her babies finally. Of course, she kept me up all night making sure I was checking on her. But in the morning of March 8th, she did have her litter and everything went smoothly. There was no birthing complications and everything went good. So she ended up having um, 16 piglets. One was stillborn, so we ended up with 15 alive. And we have two bottle baby runty kind of gilts in the house right now. And of those two, one is doing great. She's nursing well, she's taken to the bottle really well. Um, no issues, she's doing good. But the other one is very weak. She's definitely touch and go. I've been doing a few different treatments with her and nothing really seems to be helping. So I don't have high hopes for her, unfortunately. And I think that sometimes piglets just aren't meant to live despite our best efforts. So we'll see how she does, but I don't have high hopes for her. My plan with them is to hopefully graft them onto my other sow, Peppa, that is due, she's actually due today, but I don't see any signs of labor. So I'm thinking she'll be a little bit late, but my plan is to graft these two little girls onto her if they survive until then, which it's looking like at least one will. Um, I want to try rubbing the afterbirth on them and hopefully that will prevent the sow from rejecting them. I just hope that they're strong enough to nurse on the sow and uh, get in there with the rest of the litter. On a positive note, Peppa does usually have a little bit of a smaller litter, so there will be some extra teats available if she has the same sizes of litters that she's had in the past. And so they won't have to fight a whole bunch of other piglets for one teat. There'll be ample space for them. I am trying to uh, use a nipple with them. I know that there is a risk of aspirating in piglets when you are bottle feeding and using a nipple. However, with my plan to graft them onto the other sow, I'm trying to keep them on the nipple so that they are still accustomed to sucking on a nipple and not pan feeding, which I know is an option but it's just not one I want to try quite yet. Basically what I'm saying is if I can avoid having bottle baby piglets, I'm going to try to do that because they are a lot of work and they're very noisy. And if you've heard piglet squeal, they are very loud and very dramatic. <laughs> Still waiting on Peppa to have her babies, but uh, this will be the first time that we have farrowed two sows together. Usually we only feral one at a time and we give them enough of a break in between that we can have one farrowed, weaned, and out of that pen before we move another sow in. But this time, we don't. We have them due only two days apart. So what I've done is I've converted our sow pen into a mock farrowing pen and then our other sow farrowed in our usual farrowing stall. So yeah, we'll see how that goes, but we've got everything set up so it's safe. We've got crush rails, we've got a nice corner blocked off for the piglets to get away from the sow with a heat lamp in there. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. Um, when we first set up our pig area, we kind of set it up for having only one sow farrow at a time, but we've since outgrown that. Definitely we'll have to think of some changes that we need to make in the future to make our pig facility run a little smoother. But as for now, we've got everything set up so that it's safe and usable and it'll work for now. But yeah, I will keep you guys updated on how Peppa's doing and make sure that you watch our Facebook and Instagram pages for stories. I try to post often every day so you guys can get a glimpse into what we're doing on the daily.
anyways, take care guys and thank you again for watching. Please like and subscribe. It really helps our channel and helps us to connect to other homesteaders in our area and beyond.